Hi everyone, I'm here to talk about processing your foraged clay. So I have recently gathered all this clay in North Carolina and I brought it home to where I'm saying uh, to try and get it to a little bit more workable of a state. So this is a secondary clay that has quite a bit of sand in it. So I'm going to try, uh, well it has a lot of rocks in it too. So I'm gonna try and screen uh, as much of the sand and rocks and other things out of it as I can. So the first step to doing that is I've got it, um, I've got it in this bucket. You can see there's roots and things in it. Um, it's not the best clay. Some clays you can pull right out of the ground and they're ready to work with almost, or some of them you can put them right on the wheel. Those are typically your primary clays, which are more pure. This secondary clay has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, so I'm gonna slake it down and I'm going to screen it and then I'm going to put it in a pillowcase to drain out the water basically. So uh, right now I'm just kind of breaking up some of these clumps that are in here, doing what I can, um, and then we'll let it slake down over a night or two and see what happens. So let's see, it's kind of into a slurry now. I think it's sat for about a day. So I'm still just breaking up any clumps that are in there and uh, it, it's becoming smooth and creamy, which is good. We want to get it to a consistency that we can screen. So um, I took this window screen off of the house that I'm staying at and I'm just gonna kind of gently try and screen the sludge or the slip through it. There's so much other stuff in here. Uh, this screen, I could probably have a much finer screen, really. It's a little bit too big to get all of the sand out of it, but it's okay. We can have some sand in our clay. It's just gonna make it a little short, difficult to work with, um, but we could still work with it. Um, clays like this, if I was trying to sustainably uh, dig clay and process it for my own sculpture practice or a pottery practice, I would probably want to find a primary source of clay with a lot less impurities. This clay, um, we can process a small batch and use it, but it really does take a lot more work than the primary clay source. I mean, look at all of that sand and grit and stuff that is kind of screening off of there. So I think this is the clay slurry. You can see now it's been screened. It is a lot more smooth. Uh, but there's a little bit of sand in it still, that's fine. But it's a lot better than it was really. To me personally, I think that this clay would make a better slip. That would, it would be better to use as a decorative slip. And some of these low fire clays as a slip actually turn into a glaze, or they might actually flux out quite a bit at higher temperatures. So a lot of it is trying to figure out the materials that you find, what, what is the best use for the job, really? So now I have let that clay slake out a little bit, and you can see the water is, is sitting on top, and I wanna try and drain off as much of that water as possible. So I'll come in there with a cup and just try and get as much of it off, dump it out. Um, and then that way I can pour that slurry into a pillowcase, uh, hang it up and let it dry and that'll get me a little bit closer to a plastic clay body. So I just put this pillowcase uh, over a bucket or a pot like this and like I said it's already been screened. I can pour it in there. Again if I had finer screens I would probably I would run it through a finer screen but uh, it's okay this is kind of still an interesting substance to work with. And uh, it posed some problems with its shortness when I was trying to build with it later, which you'll see. So I'm gonna get every little bit out that I can. And really it's quite simple. I'm just gonna tie the pillowcase up. I tie a rope around it and then I hang it off the side of my porch. So uh, the pillowcase allows for water to leave and to drain out of the bottom, either just by dripping or later through evaporation, um, but the clay stays in it, which is really nice, actually. It's a really good way to do this, I think. 
um, nice cheetah print pillowcase. So we'll let that drain and I let this hang out for about 48 hours. You can see we have a nice slow drip there. Eventually that stops and then we're just really relying on evaporation to get it better. And you can see this is the clay that came out. There's still a lot of sand in it. Um, it's very short. So I had a really hard time working with it. Um, but I was able to make some things. What I realized is that it's not good for coil building. It would not be good for throwing. Um, but it was actually surprisingly strong once put together. Um, it it's very durable, hard to break once it gets bone dry, but very hard to work with. Uh, so I wasn't able to coil build. What I was able to do is make some some press molded pieces, really. So and some beads. So you can see I was able to get the clay uh, up into a form super, super hard. It's almost like a cob mixture that you might use uh, in, in building rather than in making pottery. So that was our clay video all about processing. And um, I think that was it. So until next time, thanks.